So the conversation is here. Yes. But if you want to talk. Good evening. Your eye health, your eyes are an important part of your health and protecting your overall health can go a long way towards keeping your eyes healthy. Eye disease and blindness can affect both the young and the old. While eye problems and eye diseases becomes more prevalent with age, many are prevented or preventable and can be corrected if one gets early diagnosis and treatment. Joining us live in studio tonight is Dr. Mushai Gashago, an ophthalmologist and retina specialist. A doctor who is passionate about eradication and avoid, avoidance of blindness and enhancing patient's access to quality and affordable eye care. He is here to talk about disease and blindness. So you can start sending in your questions tonight regarding our topic to our WhatsApp line 0708-222-323. That is 0708-222-323 or the SMS line is 222 We're also live on Facebook and YouTube via our handle at Hope TV Kenya. Good evening and welcome to Health Check this evening. My name is Grace Mutiso. I'm glad you could join us. Allow me at this point to introduce to us Dr. Mushai. Good evening, Dr. Good evening. Happy New Year. And a Happy New Year <laughs> to you. We still have a day too. Exactly. <laughs> Just to, to conclude this Happy New Year, my yes. has the year begun for you? Not bad. Uh, off to a busy start, changing the world one eyeball at a time. Wow, I yes. like that. Changing <laughs> the world one eyeball at a yes, time. Yes, yes. Okay. So let's begin the conversation by just um, you helping us um, answer this question. Who is an ophthalmologist and retina specialist and what do they do? And why are you passionate about this? Yeah, so first of all, I'll say thank you for having me on your show. It's our pleasure and a privilege to be here with you and to talk to the numerous Kenyans and beyond out there about something I'm very passionate about, which is eyes and eye health. Yes. My name is Dr. Mushai Gashago. I'm an ophthalmologist mm. practicing at the City Eye Hospital in Nairobi, actually just across the road from here. Yes. And uh, so I am an eye doctor. I am also, you know, very interested in education. Mm. We teach residents from the University of Nairobi um, and also educate my fellow colleagues, you know, about eye health, educate my patients about eye health mm. and also involved in the leadership of the eye care agenda in Kenya. Uh, through organizations such as the Ophthalmological Society of Kenya, the Retina Society of Kenya, if you didn't know it existed, oh, wow. and the College of Ophthalmology of Eastern, Central, and Southern Africa. Mm. So understanding the cadres in eye health, I think, is important yes. so that everybody knows where to go for help. Yes. So when you talk about eye health, ophthalmologists are medical doctors who have then further specialized in eye care. So you do your normal degree in medicine, which is five to six years, depending on where you do it, and then specialize in ophthalmology, which is the management of eye diseases, um, medically and surgically. Uh, that forms a realm of ophthalmology. Mm -hmm. So we manage the whole range of eye diseases. Yes. Now, beyond that, you could specialize further. And for me, I have specialized in what is called vitreoretinal surgery, where we specialize in diseases of the retina, which is the back of the eye. That is the important structure in your eye that really helps you see and converts images to stuff that is understandable by your brain. Mm. Yes. Why, why, why is, uh, allow me to ask Dr. Tari, mm. you know, you've mentioned written and you're so passionate about it. <laughs> I've heard you say it's the, the back of the eye. Yeah. So what's the importance of the back of the eye before we, we come yeah. to the conversation deeper? Yeah, well, the eyeball, we generally divide it into two. There's the front of the eye and the back of the eye. So the front of the eye is largely responsible for focusing light. So you have the cornea, which is a clear, you know, outer part of your eye, and the lens, which then further focuses light onto your retina yeah. at the back of the eye. So mm -hmm. the front of the eye largely produces fluid for the eye and focuses light. Yes. The back of the eye, that's where the heavy-duty processing happens. What happens there? Because now you have light is focused on the retina, and the retina then converts this light to electrical impulses that are then transmitted by the nerve to the brain in a way that the brain can understand. So you can see that having 
diseases there mm. isn't just a good thing because mm. it severely affects your vision depending of course on the severity of the disease okay yeah thank you yeah. and of course if you're joining us right now you're health tech and our focus today is on you know uh eye disease and blindness that's our focus of discuss our, our focus for the discussion tonight if you have any question again our sms line is triple two three two that is triple two three two you can also whatsapp us we have a whatsapp line by the way it's scrolling at the bottom of your screen that is zero seven zero eight triple two three two three that is zero seven zero eight triple two three two three that's the number you can text in your question. So let's begin by, by defining what, what is eye disease. Yeah, so eye disease, I guess, is anything that goes wrong with the functioning of your eye. So that will be a disease process. And they are of various types. Mm. There are so many types. So you could have from simple things like poor focusing of the eye, which we now call refractive errors which are correctable with glasses. So people will either be short-sighted or long-sighted or anything in between. Uh, so those will be refractive errors. Yeah. And then it could be infections of the eye. I'm sure those are quite common and most people will know about, you know, red eyes, discharging eyes. Yes. So things like conjunctivitis, eyelid infections, and even infections all the way into the mm -hmm. eye. Mm. And then you have now things like trauma. Mm -hmm. And then you've got eye diseases such as cataracts, which are quite common, where now certain structures in the eye start getting affected. And then, of course, you could have diseases of the body manifesting in the eye, which is quite common. Mm -hmm. The eye, I think, is the organ with the most manifestations of systemic disease. Yeah. Diabetes could affect your eyes. High blood pressure could affect your eyes. Thyroid disease can affect your eyes. Lupus can affect your eyes. So many conditions autoimmune diseases have their say in the eye so lots of diseases can then have their you know manifest in the eye mm -hmm. so eye diseases will be of various types mm -hmm. and you know we'll not only talk about eye diseases but diseases of the vision system yes. because beyond the eye then messages need to get to the brain through the nerve mm -hmm. so you could also have nerve diseases that affect your vision and of course diseases in the brain that could eventually also affect your vision mm -hmm. so it's a huge area uh, hence the numerous specializations yeah. within ophthalmology. Mm. Yeah. It sounds like uh, there are so many things that can mess up the eye, yet the eye is the most important part of the body. It's, okay, the rest are important, yeah. but the eye is most important because it yeah. helps you see and, and do so much. Yes. I, I, I want to ask, I've, I've seen people who squint a lot, is that an eye disease? It could be, you know, because some people squint because their focusing is wrong. Beyond short sight and long sight, you have something called astigmatism which is a refractive error, where the eye has two powers instead of mm -hmm. one. So because of that, people tend to squint mm -hmm. to eliminate one and focus on, so that you're left with only one focus. Mm -hmm. So that could be one. A lot of children who are straining to see also tend to squint to see. Uh, but for some people, it's also a psychological thing, a mannerism of sorts. Mm. But, you know, anyone who's squinting <laughs> should definitely get an eye checkup yes. to find out really if there's something wrong with the eyes. Okay. Yeah. We also mentioned you're focusing on blindness. So what's yeah. that? Yeah, so blindness is defined by the World Health Organization. So in the scope of visual impairment from mild to severe. So you'll have patient, people with mild visual impairment where we use the chart that you read when you go to an optical shop or you know, to the eye doctor, you tend to read the letters on a chart, yes. it's called a Snellen chart. Yes. So normal vision is up to what you call from 6'6", or what people call 20-20 vision, to 6'18". That is considered normal. So says the WHO. Then it goes reducing that way. Mm -hmm. So blindness now is defined by anybody who cannot read the chart from three meters. So that is vision lesson, what's called 360. If you can't see the big letter from three meters, you are considered legally blind. Of course, such a person can still do a number of things because it means you can see at least, you know, letters at three meters, which means you can see people and objects well beyond three meters. But for purposes of function, work, employment, driving, that's what has been set off as a cutoff. Mm. So people who can not see the big letter from three meters, those are defined as blind. Mm. Yes. You know, Dr. Shea could be saying that and somebody could be saying, I will put something at three meters, I see. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if I'm having, so it means you have to be diagnosed professionally by a yes. doctor to determine yes. if you are blind or yes. not. Okay, thank you for that. So we, we mentioned that some diseases could um, affect the eye. Are there some other things that uh, 
we could be doing that mm. could lead to eye disease apart from diseases like diabetes which yeah. you've mentioned things that one could be well i'd say well negligence i think is important because especially in the area of work you see a lot of factory workers juakali workers are exposed to jobs that require hammering chiseling grinding mm. and a lot of them don't wear protective eyewear so that is an area where, that I find is neglected because trauma is a common cause of, let me call it monocular blindness, where you're blind in one eye mm -hmm. because of trauma. Yeah. So that could be an area that is largely uh, kind of not addressed. Welding is another common one because you'll find a lot of workers locally, you'll find them welding without proper protective eyewear, mm. the eye shield or the face shield. Mm. Some of them will, you know, use sunglasses that mm. are really not adequate for that work. Mm -hmm. So those are areas that I feel um, have been neglected. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, most of the eye diseases have, you know, underlying disease or eye injury or age underlying them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, COVID, COVID showed us things, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Ari, and, and you find most of the time you have to be uh, in front of your computer, yes. meetings after meetings after meetings or working after yes. working. Uh, could that have some effect on your eyes or it's just okay? No, it does. It, um, you know, a lot of screen time has been associated with people having a lot of dry eye, what's called dry eye syndrome. What is because that? Because when you're on a computer, it's a visually demanding task. You're not blinking as frequently as you should. And this often leads to dryness. Because as you blink, you circulate the tears around your eyes. Now there you are glued to your computer, Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting, document after document, your eyes tend to get dry. And in very severe cases, dry eye can actually cause some level of visual impairment. So that is one. And also eye strain, because computers are at a pretty close working distance to you. So your eyes tend to stay focused for hours on end. So this has led to a lot of headaches, eye strain, and things like that. Mm. So, and beyond even you know, effects on your vision system, it has effects on your sleep cycles. Mm. Because here you are meeting with people in New York, yes. because now meetings are virtual. Yes. For them, it is midday. For you, it is 7, 8 p.m. Mm. Really, you should be prepping to go to bed, turning down, putting screens off. And here you are on a Zoom call. Mm. So you find people are exposed to bright computer lights, um, which really affect, you know, the sleep signals in your brain, something called um, melatonin. So you mm. find that affects your sleep cycle. So you're done with your meetings at 10 p.m. Now you have problems falling asleep mm -hmm. and you find a lot of people have had sleep cycles affected mm -hmm. and the next day you're cranky, you're moody, you're not working at your peak and it can be a vicious cycle. Mm. Yeah, what so about those the will TV? be some of the effects. What about the TV same and, thing. and relation to children? Yes, mm. so same thing with the TV. You're, you're exposing, the thing is, TV is not as bad as laptops and iPads because those are pretty close to your face. And phones. So the effect is a little more exaggerated. Mm -hmm. But you really don't want to be watching TV an hour to bedtime, half an hour to bedtime. Mm -hmm. For some people, it will affect their sleep cycles as well. Mm -hmm. But not to the extent of phones, laptops, iPads. Those are really close to your face mm -hmm. and really stimulate your awake signals in your brain. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And Dr. Harry, you've mentioned about circulating the tears, you know, and, and causing the, if the tears are not circulated in the eye, yeah. the, the eye gets dry. Yes. So take us through that journey of tears. What's, what's the importance of tears? <laughs> you know, we just interact with tears when you're so emotional, yes. you know, in those um, functions when you need to shed a yes. tear, yes. or you're just too happy, you're excited. Yes. So what's, what's the value of tears? Yeah. The tears are extremely important to us. Yes. In ancient times, part of punishments included removing people's eyelids. And oh, such no. people went blind because mm -hmm. with no eyelids, your eyes just go dry. Mm -hmm. So tears are important for the normal functioning of your eye. They lubricate the surface of your eye. They are important to focusing light. Mm -hmm. You find your cornea, the outermost covering of your eye that is transparent, yes. focuses a huge amount of light Actually, almost maybe two-thirds to three-quarters of the focusing happens at the cornea. But the cornea doesn't have a smooth surface. It's made of cells, so it's a bit rough. Mm -hmm. So what makes it smooth and act like a clear lens is actually the tear film that overlies your cornea. Mm -hmm. So you find that if your eyes are dry, that function is impaired. Now, tears are of two types. Yes. There's basal tears, the ones that are there normally. Mm -hmm. Their job is just to lubricate, moisturize your eye, 
and then those those that come secondary to something else mm -hmm. you are spanked mm -hmm. you are emotional mm -hmm. something gets into your eye mm -hmm. those are reflex tears mm -hmm. so those mm -hmm. those tears now are of an excess amount because their job is to mm -hmm. you know express your emotion mm -hmm. or get foreign bodies get tear gas out of your eyes you know so those are other types of tears but the ones i'm referring to are kind of the basal tears that are there just to help moisturize and lubricate your eyes mm. all the time. Mm. So those need to be kept in constant circulation. You need to be blinking regularly. Mm. When you're on screen, screen, screens, that doesn't, that tends not to happen. Mm. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. So let's get to some of the warning signs that we need to look out for to tell, as a telltale sign that yeah. you have an eye issue, you need to see a doctor immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the commonest of eye problems, of course, are refractive errors. Refractive errors are eye diseases that are correctable with glasses. Those are the most common. So you'll find in the younger population, talking children, teens, 20s, is difficulty seeing. So most of them you'll have the teacher report to the parent. The child is not seeing. We have to move him to the front of the class so that he can read the board. Mm -hmm. Or the mother will report he has to sit right next to the TV. So those are common things that will tell you this child is probably straining yeah. because they should ideally be able to see from a normal distance. So those kind of behaviors, need to be picked out and mm. teachers are very good at it. Mm. A lot of them is because teachers pick it out in school mm. or parents then notice the child sitting too close to the TV. Mm. Um, and so, and those are correctable largely with glasses. Mm. But then now you have other problems as people grow older mm. that then tend to set, set up and some of them will be visible. Mm. If you're having an eye discharge, if you're having red eyes, even your workmates will ask you, where were you last night? Mm -hmm. You know you are just at home. <laughs> or you have your not Bible rested enough. <laughs> you know that. So uh, when yeah. you, those, those things will tell you something could be off. Yeah. Or if you find that normal light is affecting you too much. Those are common signs and symptoms. And then also, as other eye diseases set in, let's say retina diseases, or at the back of their patients will report seeing things like floaters, little black spots floating around, or flashes of light, or being unable to see on one particular side, you start noticing any changes in your vision or seeing things that are not there. Mm. Many of them report like seeing flies that they try to swat and, you know, there's no fly. So such subtle symptoms tell you something could be off and warrant an eye checkup. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, things like cataracts as they set in with older age, then patients will report difficulty driving at night, lights are causing too much, or you're seeing halos around lights, having difficulty seeing at night, and you require very bright light to read at home. So those are signs that could tell you something is off with the eye. And then, of course, there's sudden loss of vision for some people. Some people tell you, I was driving and suddenly I could not see. Oh. Or I was just waking up and I suddenly saw blood or a flash of red. Some are very dramatic and very sudden, mm -hmm. and you will know. Mm -hmm. But eye disease, generally, most of the signs and symptoms are very subtle. And it's at this stage that you need to get an eye check so that we pick it up before it becomes complicated. Yes. Because the eye can tend to be very unforgiving mm. if you delay on seeking care. Okay. Yes. Let's talk about um, our parents, the, the aged ones. Yes. You know, some of them don't understand, you know. So what happens to the eyes when somebody grows old and how can yeah. our aging, you know, yeah. viewers take care of their eyes? Yeah. yeah. So definitely as you grow older, changes happen in the entire body and the eye is not spared. And the most common change that happens and I think that needs to come to the attention is, I'd say, three things. One is the change in the lens. The lens in your eye is what focuses light. Yes. So as you get older, especially beyond the age of 40, 44, the lens becomes less flexible, and therefore you're unable to focus very near. And that's the first thing that most people notice. They can't hold their book here, and they keep pushing it farther and farther until their arms are too short to hold the book, <laughs> right? Yes. So that is called presbyopia. It's because of the lens becoming less flexible with age, and therefore reading at a near distance becomes difficult. Yeah. So that is the number one thing that happens to most people. So that difficulty reading fine print, mm -hmm. it, it's very prevalent. Globally, maybe one billion people suffer from that. It's very common. Mm -hmm. Reading near is very, it's a, it's a common problem. Yeah. And it's not really a disease, it's just a change of the eye with age. Mm -hmm. The second thing that happens to the lens, because it continually gets you know, thicker and thicker and starts getting cloudy, now those are called cataracts. Yes. And they will start noticing the vision not being as bright as it was before, uh, or some, for some people double vision, or, you know, glare with light. It presents in different ways for different people. So that would be the next thing. Mm. And then, of course, the third one that I'd say comes with age is glaucoma. Glaucoma is, of all the 
causes of blindness, glaucoma is the worst because it's irreversible. Mm -hmm. You could be blind from cataract today, we'll do your surgery today, you will see tomorrow. But glaucoma, whatever vision you lose, it's gone. Oh. Because glaucoma is kind of nerve damage mm -hmm. because of commonly high pressure in the eye. So that's what tends to happen. And that also generally tends to happen with age. Yeah. Some babies are born with glaucoma. It's a sad state, but generally, most common form of glaucoma is adult onset, usually patients above 40, heading to 60, and it has very subtle symptoms. Start noticing little halos around light, mm -hmm. then difficulty seeing towards the edges because it affects your vision from the outward coming inward. Yes. So that, those, those tend to be the common things that you like, you'll expect for the older population. Mm -hmm. Presbyopia, difficulty reading, mm -hmm. onset of cataracts, and glaucoma. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything they can do, like foods to eat, exercises <laughs> to do, <laughs> or maybe crying a lot to, <laughs> to, well, to help yeah. them at, at least yeah. through their eyes? Because I've seen most of them yeah. glasses, you know? Yes. Glasses. So what practical yeah. things can our aged people yeah. do? Well, I mean, generally speaking, when it comes to, there's a big study done. Yeah. It's called the ARRED study, age-related eye disease study. Mm -hmm huge study, thousands and thousands of patients were done, and they found that some minerals and multivitamins included in the diet had some effect on preserving vision in the long term. And they were looking at things like cataract, what's called age-related macular degeneration. But they found that this mix of multivitamins and minerals would actually be found in a normal, healthy diet with adequate fruits and vegetables. You know, here we like serving the ugali fast. Oh, yeah. It takes up 80% <laughs> of the space on your plate. And yeah. the vegetables and the protein are like a garnishing to your ugali. Yeah. That's the wrong way to eat. Yeah. So if you have a healthy, balanced diet with adequate fruits and vegetables, generally speaking, you will get all the nutrients you need for health and even health of the eyes. Mm. You don't really need to take any special multivitamins. Yes. But because of certain nutritional deficiencies, and access to food for some people, then multivitamin supplements may be important. Mm. So a healthy diet is number one. Yes. Then number two for the older people, I mean, when it comes to reading problem, presbyopia, you can't escape the glasses. Mm. Just get them. Yeah. Because patients strain and strain for years trying to avoid glasses. You strain until you can't, you know, you can't strain anymore, then you get the glasses. Mm. And you do that for five, six, seven, ten years. So if you need glasses, get them. They make your life much easier. You see so much better. Yes. Then in terms of things like cataracts, good thing cataracts are fixable. The minute you have visual impairment that affects your daily living activities, and that varies from person to person, then it's time to have your cataracts taken out. Mm. When it comes to glaucoma, nutrition might not change much, but knowing you have it and getting it diagnosed early is most important. And because it has a tendency to go in families, if you have it, you need to recommend your siblings and your children to be screened. Because if it's running in the family, we might catch it earlier in your son or in your brother. Mm -hmm. So I've had a case where a patient came with completely unrelated, yeah. had a sty. And I decided to just look at the back of the eye as a matter of routine. And I find he has pretty advanced glaucoma, but he was unaware of it, only to tell me that he came because his dad has also been attending the clinic. And when I got the dad's file, I found we are also treating him for glaucoma. Yeah. So you see, there's that tendency. So if you have glaucoma, get your siblings and your children tested by the age of 35, diagnose it early, treat it early, preserve vision. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I'm hosting Dr. Mushaye Gashago, an ophthalmologist and retina specialist. And our focus for today is about eye disease and blindness. Do you have any question about this topic? Or have been wondering what is happening to my eyes? Please text in that question or WhatsApp the question. Our SMS line is triple two three two. That is triple two three two. You can also WhatsApp us, you know, if you prefer WhatsApp, the line is zero seven zero eight. Triple two three two three. That is zero seven zero eight triple two three two three. Those are the platforms you can use to forward in your question. We are also live on Facebook and YouTube via the handle at Hop TV Kenya. You can get to the comment section and drop there your question. Dr. Moshe will be glad to answer you. Before we go to a quick break, Dr. Tari, let's talk about blindness. Is there something we can do to prevent blindness? There's a lot we can do to prevent blindness. Yes. In Kenya, 88% of blindness is avoidable. 
80, I'm not talking half, I'm saying 88, that's almost 90%. Yeah. So out of all, take 100 people who are blind, only 12, it was unavoidable. Mm. The other 88 should not be blind. Mm. It could have been avoided. Yes. Or it is treatable. So those are the statistics. So there is a lot we can do in terms of preventing blindness. Mm -hmm. So when, of course, when we look at the commonest causes, we are talking refractive errors, which is vision that can be corrected with glasses because we have a lot of people, especially children in you know, rural areas who do not have access to proper health. Mm -hmm. They are struggling and suffering in class. A simple problem that could be fixed with a simple pair of glasses. So, and, and they are the majority. So that is a huge section of visual impairment and blindness that can be sorted with just a pair of glasses. Yes. So that's a huge chunk. The next common cause of blindness is cataract. Again, treatable mm -hmm. with, a, let me say, 10 to 30 minute surgery, depending on the experience of your surgeon mm -hmm. or the complexity of your cataract. Yes. But cataract surgery, we do them in the hundreds every week, thousands per year. Mm -hmm. and, and the outcomes from cataract surgery are good and they're getting better. We do regular cataract audits at our hospital to try and find ways to improve on the quality of cataract surgery because it's the most common surgery that we are doing. Yes. And with time, we see that improving with improved techniques, improved technology and experience. Mm. So cataract surgery, fixable with a surgery that takes no longer than you know, 15 to 30 minutes and the next day, your vision is back. So that's a huge chunk yes. of blindness. Mm. But you have a lot of people, again, distant areas and not even distant areas. We find people even as close as within Nairobi and Kiambu blind from cataract. And you know, and these are even educated people. So it's not an issue of even ignorance. Yeah. So sometimes it's just knowing that this service is avail available, knowing that your vision is going, not because of age. Age is not a cause of blindness. Yeah. You could be old, but the cause of blindness is cataract or diabetes or glaucoma. So the age itself is not a cause of blindness. It's finding out what is the underlying cause. So all those are treatable. And then, of course, avoidable blindness in form of glaucoma. As I mentioned, glaucoma is the next common cause of blindness. Yes. And the bad thing about glaucoma, it is irreversible. Mm. But with early screening and treatment, the blindness from glaucoma is largely avoidable. Mm. And then you have childhood diseases. You know, we've got childhood glaucoma, childhood cataracts, mm. the refractive errors in children. Um, and, you know, a lot of these are treatable with timely interventions. Mm. And then, of course, there's a huge chunk now from metabolic diseases, number one of which is diabetes. Mm. And that, that, I think, is a whole discussion on its own yes. that I think we shall have. But mm. even blindness from diabetes truly is avoidable with good control of the diabetes. And in case the diabetes isn't well controlled and you get into the diabetic eye disease, with early diagnosis, mm. we have the treatments available, and they are effective to at least avoid further vision loss and even improve vision uh, with time. And the, 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 the whole range of treatments really is available locally, and really no one should be going blind from diabetes. Mm. But unfortunately, I see several blind patients with, from diabetes every day. Mm. Again, it could have been avoided. Yeah. And that, that, that there is our mission, mm. to reduce avoidable blindness because blindness really is the worst of all disabilities uh, surveys have been done studies have been done when people have compared blindness to other disabilities and blindness is always the most feared so people fear it but don't do much in terms of avoiding it mm. but the minute you get blind or your vision is threatened by a disease you really panic yeah. because blindness is scary mm. that you might not see you can't watch a movie you can't walk yourself to the loo and you have to be taken it's very limiting you know it really shrinks your world eh? mm. so compared to deafness it's, it's people fear blindness more than deafness mm. even even quadriplegia yeah. i mean being completely paralyzed from the neck down mm. people would rather that than go blind mm -hmm. and i'm talking science i'm talking studies yes. people fear blindness more than insanity mm -hmm. would you rather go insane or i'd say it's okay let me keep my vision even if I, you know, it's, it's mm. the most feared disability. Yes. And because of that, really, this huge chunk, I think 88%, completely avoidable, mm. should not be there. And we are now doing everything we can to get that down. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's Dr. Michelle Gashago helping us discuss this topic about eye disease and blindness. Do you have any question? 
22323 is the SMS line and 0708222323. It's our WhatsApp line. When you come back, we'll be sampling some of your questions on those two platforms and also on YouTube and Facebook. Keep it right here. This is Health Check. Let's have this health break. When you come back, we'll continue with the program. Keep it up, TV. Every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Spotlight. Do you feel like they are in a place where they can effect a Barack Obama moment? When you hear the word of God and you hear Jesus is speaking. Real talk on real issues. You know the Bible says faith without works is dead. The truth of the gospel that will survive the time is not a health and wealth gospel. When there is time to harmonize and bring one composite amendment with idealistic, thought-provoking guests. So people come to be serviced, to be encouraged, to be empowered. When the storm is over, you desire the closeness you have with God. Hosted by Reverend Edward Furi. Hope TV is now available on GoTV Channel 103, Zuku Channel 873, Signet Channel 817, and Star Times Channel 026. Enjoy our uplifting content and family-friendly programming anytime. Hope TV, you look and live. Welcome back to Health Check right here at Hope TV, Look and Live. And we want to appreciate you for watching us on the different platforms that we have and also those following us online on Facebook and YouTube. We salute you all. Thank you for keeping it right here. We promised when you come back, uh, we'll be looking at your questions. And I'm hosting Dr. Mushai Gashago. And Dr. Tari, let's sample a few questions that have come through. One of our viewers by the name Anthony Chiari, we salute you for watching us and he's asking, say, say hello to Dr. Mshai, he is my mentor. <laughs> Thank you for spreading uh, the word on eradicating needless eye blindness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching us. Another viewer says, uh, Dr. Tari, my job entails using the PC uh, stroke laptop for at least eight hours daily. How do I ensure that my safety is guaranteed? Yeah. Mm. That's a question I get often because the work must get done. If you're an accountant, you're in front of a computer the whole day, an architect, an IT specialist. So what you do is manage the screen settings first of all. I'm happy that the old mm. big box screens are off. Those were really bad for eyes. And now yes. we are dealing mostly with LCD kind of screens which are a bit more comfortable to use. Mm. So put the lighting to a level that is manageable. Mm. So you don't have too bright a screen. Mm. Now, next thing you need to do is take regular breaks. As you said, the screens, the main thing they'll do is cause you dry eye syndrome yes. because of that long exposure, reduced blinking. So to manage that, take breaks. Mm. You, will, you should not be on your computer more than an hour nonstop. So you'll be on your laptop the whole day, but take regular breaks, 45 minutes, maximum an hour, take a short break. Yes. And don't take a break from your laptop to look at your iPad or your phone. <laughs> you take a break from screens. Yes. So say hello to your colleague, yes. go to the water dispenser, yes. look outside and enjoy God's beautiful mm. nature. Mm. Do something away from a screen, yes. even for just five, 10 minutes and get back to work. Mm -hmm. You'll find you're rejuvenated, you're fresher, and your eyes are happier mm -hmm. because they got to blink a little. Yes. So those would be the tips. Some people, light generally affects them and tend to use glasses with anti-glare yes. or what's called a blue block to help reduce you know the bright white and blue lights mm. so all those are options that you can also take okay. but you need to take those will not protect you from dry eye mm. for dry eyes you need to take a break yes. so that you have time to really get your eyes blinking and circulating those tears around mm. Tears must circulate. <laughs> Take a break. Aye. Now, I do see Meskia, please, when they stand to go, and just leave them. <laughs> Their eyes need to do something. This one is asking the Tari uh, if short, can short sightedness lead to partial or full blindness? That's Eunice asking. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for that question, Eunice. Short sightedness, or what we call myopia, is one of the biggest risk factors for what we call retinal detachment. Mm. And unfortunately, a lot of people 
have not been informed of this fact, especially for those who are very short-sighted, what you call high myopia. Yeah. If your glasses are more than minus five, you need to have an annual eye checkup with an ophthalmologist. Not at Optica. Dr. Ripoli, yes. what is minus five? You know, your glasses have a power. Okay. So some people have glasses of minus one, minus two, plus two. You know, there's a power for your glasses. So power does what? So the higher the power, yes. the more your need for correction, you know. Okay. So high power is anything above minus five or plus five on this other side. Yes. So those are high, kind of, we now consider that high myopia mm. or hyperopia on the other end. Yes. So high myopia, if your glasses are above minus five, puts you at high risk of retinal detachment mm. because these patients tend to have changes on the retina that cause it to be weak. And therefore, they start getting breaks and holes in the retina. Mm. And unfortunately, these are not very symptomatic. Some might report seeing little floaters or flashes, but often they don't even know what's going on. Mm. So when these breaks happen, by themselves, they're not bad. Problem is, fluid starts to leak under these breaks and cause detachment of the retina. Mm. Now, when your retina detaches, that is causes severe visual impairment. Yeah. And, you know, unfixed, it, will cause, it can cause blindness. Mm. So myopia or short-sightedness is a common risk factor for retinal detachment. Yes. I mean, when you look at retinal detachments, about 40% of them have short-sightedness or myopia as a risk factor. Mm. So anyone who's short-sighted really should go beyond just getting your glasses checked at, you know, the optical shop mm -hmm. and make an appointment with an eye doctor, an yes. ophthalmologist, mm to have a good look at the eye. We need to get a look at your retina. This often involves putting some drops in your eyes to open up your pupils so that we can see the entire retina. Mm. Because if we see these little breaks in the early stages, they're very easy to fix, mm -hmm. as opposed to waiting to the point where you get a detached retina. And now it's an emergency. You're coming to the hospital because suddenly you can't see and major surgery is required. Okay. Yeah. Sawa, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, Eunice, for writing in. Another uh, viewer writes and says, Hello, Dr. Tari, my father is 70 years and has been battling cataracts for a few years now. Uh, all doctors give is eye drops, and he's, at his age, what is the best remedy? That is wa Wangai from Mombasa. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Wangai, for your question. No one should have to battle cataracts because the solution is known. So it, it doesn't need to be a battle. It's about just getting the right diagnosis and the right treatment. Mm -hmm. So if he's already been diagnosed with cataracts and they are causing him significant visual impairment, they are affecting his day-to-day -day tasks. Mm -hmm. He's having difficulty reading or driving mm -hmm. or walking or whatever he likes to do. Mm -hmm. If he's reached that stage, the cataracts need to be operated. Mm -hmm. And cataract surgery these days is so good. It is so fast, it is minimally invasive and the outcomes are so good. Mm. So he should just get a, you know, a consult with a good ophthalmologist mm. you know, near him. He can visit us at the City Eye Hospital mm. and we'll be sure to have a look at him and give him the treatment he requires. Mm. The eye drops could be treating other things. Yes. I don't know what his, his entire span of you know, conditions is. Mm. He might be having dry eyes or infection. So the drops could be treating something else. But if it's a cataract, Cataracts require a surgical solution, which is to extract the cataract and uh, have the gentleman seeing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I know a question that would come is how, how expensive or affordable is it? But yeah. you want to watch it up, or maybe you'll tell us at the end. Yeah. Thank you, Brian Waweru, for watching us from Kilimani area. You can see you right there. Uh, Rian Mary, thank you for tuning in. I can see you on, on, on YouTube. And Margaret Musimbi, you're watching us from Embakasi West. Thank you so much. Mudoni, Mushai, mm, tuned in and saying thank you, Dr. Mushai. I'm so proud of you, my dear husband. <laughs> thank Supporting you. Supporting wife. Woohoo! <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Asante sana. Uh, Hannah Mbugwa, you're saying very informative session. Uh, thank you so much. Keep the comments coming. Let's up also those who are watching us uh, and you've texted in via our, our SMS line that is 22232. Uh, a viewer writes and says, that is Sam from, from Mulolongo, you're asking, please ask the Tari, what is disc, uh, disc atrophy? Is there mm -hmm. something like that, hopefully? And are there remedies or interventions for it? Mm -hmm. What is that? Yeah, thank you. Um, optic disc atrophy. The optic disc is where the optic nerve, the nerve that connects the brain to the eye. It's called the optic nerve, and so it terminates in the eye. Mm -hmm. So that end of the optic nerve, we call it the optic disc. 
So atrophy is basically like withering away or death of a tissue. Mm. So when you talk about optic disc atrophy, it means that that nerve mm. is basically scarred down. Mm. It's not functioning. Mm. So that as a condition is called optic disc atrophy. Mm. And unfortunately, w nerves are very unforgiving. So when the nerve suffers optic atrophy, you can't bring it back to life. Mm. And so generally speaking, optic atrophy will not be treatable, but it is the end of a disease process. There could have been an optic nerve inflammation, optic yes. neuritis. There could have been compression of the optic nerve by a tumor or a bleed or something. Yes. So that's a point at which it should have been treated mm -hmm. when it was inflamed or compressed. So by the time you get to optic atrophy, it's now end stage of that nerve, it's dead. So, but it's not to say that nothing should be done. At this point, if there's a little vision, you will try to preserve it. And also you want to protect the other eye. So any patient who is unilaterally blind, one eye is blind from optic atrophy or trauma or anything, yeah. should always have protective eyewear. Because now you have one eye, you have no spare. Yeah. You need to protect your good eye. So for the patient with optic disc atrophy, we recommend protective glasses that should be worn throughout to avoid any risk to the good eye. And then also that good eye should always have an annual checkup. Yes. If you have a single eye, you must see an eye doctor at least once a year. Because as we said, many eye diseases are very are asymptomatic. Yes. You only notice it when it's too late. But from our point of view, we, shall, we see those problems from a mile away. We can tell this is not going to go well. We can see a little hole in your retina. We can see your diabetic retinopathy starting to act up. So we can see those problems early and treat them and preserve that one good remaining eye. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Harry, for that. Uh, uh, Maureen, Maureen says, I have developed partial blindness. Sometimes I'm unable, I'm able to read from a distance, yet sometimes I'm not able to. I've noticed that I also no longer shed tears, just like saliva. Also, I'm, I'm forced to buy artificial ones. This, I understand, has been caused by some neurological drugs I'm on. Can this be fixed? That is Maureen. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, fluctuating vision could be caused by a number of things. Mm. So, as she's saying, the dryness. Dry eye is, a co is one of the more common causes of fluctuating vision. Remember, you said a good tear film? helps you focus better. Yes. When it's dry, your vision tends to blur. Mm. You tend to feel like lights are too bright. Mm. So the dry eye could be what is causing her vision to fluctuate. Yeah. And dry eye, as you said, could be caused by environmental factors, too much sun, wind, dust. It could be caused by age. It could be caused by underlying diseases, such as some neurological diseases and some metabolic diseases like diabetes. Mm -hmm. And it could also be a side effect of some other drugs. So if she's on drugs, that are causing her the dry eye and dry mouth, then she needs either the drugs reviewed to see if she can get alternatives mm -hmm. that don't have that as a side effect, yeah. or just commit to lubricating the eyes, in which case she continues with those tear supplements, which are often eye drops that you use maybe three to four times daily. Mm -hmm. um, but dry eye and dry mouth could be a condition on its own. There's a condition called Sjogren syndrome, yes. which patients report a lot of dryness of mucous membranes, including the eyes and the mouth. Mm -hmm. And this is an, kind of an autoimmune disease. Mm. And so that kind of assessment I know, might also be necessary yes. to find out if this could be an underlying condition. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what's the difference between short and long blindness? This is nganga. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about the term short and long blindness. Blindness is blindness. <laughs> yes. It's defined. But some people generally have difficulty seeing near yes. and some have difficulty seeing far. Mm -hmm. So most people will have that you know, we'll define blindness as inability to see far, mm. and it could be from all those conditions we have mentioned. Yes. And the difficulty seeing near, as you said, could be either someone is hyperopic, long-sighted, or now with advancing age, are getting press biopia and require glasses to see. Mm -hmm. So it could be just, you know, uh, an issue of, am I having difficulty reading or am I having difficulty seeing far? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. My son, this one, says, started wearing glasses at 12. He short-sighted from a young age, but we were afraid to let him wear the glasses very early. My question is, do the eyes get weaker as one continues to wear glasses? Yeah, that's a good question because it's a common concern for parents yeah. that I will give them glasses, get them used, and glasses will make your eyes weak. So, number one, if a child requires glasses... This is diagnosed. They've gone to a clinic, measured by the optician, the optometrist, the eye doctor, whoever, and they're told they require glasses. 
even if they are one year old, get them the glasses. Because there's a condition called amblyopia, or what people call a lazy eye. Mm. Because what happens if you don't fix it at that time, you know, the brain is developing in these children, yes. as are the vision centers in the brain. So for the vision centers to develop normally, they need clear images being projected to them from your eyes. Yes. So if this child requires glasses and he's not wearing them, it means the child is having blood vision. So blood images are being projected to the brain. So those parts of the brain don't develop fully. Uh. Now, you have up to eight years old to do this. So if you don't fix that problem by eight years, then the brain gets fixed in its ways. And correcting that later will not be possible. Mm. So you'll get them the glasses when they are 15, but they will not see beyond a certain point because the brain centers never developed fully yes. because they were not being stimulated by clear images. So you really want to avoid amblyopia. Mm. So we've had children even being carried on their mother's backs, they're a few months old and wearing glasses. They look so cute, <laughs> but they must wear those glasses <laughs> for the brain to yes. develop normally. Yes. So this one at 12 years old, mm. if he needs glasses, let him get them. Okay. Now, the concern about vision deteriorating because the of the glasses mm. is, is kind of not understanding the underlying process. Because mm. what happens, the focus of your eye depends on the size of your eyeball. Mm -hmm. And as you grow, your eyeball also grows with you. So as children are growing, they are growing taller, their eyeballs are getting slightly longer. Mm -hmm. So that will cause a slight increase in the short-sightedness. Mm -hmm. Because short-sightedness, you generally have a long eyeball. So as they grow, the short-sightedness will increase, mm -hmm. whether or not they use glasses. Mm -hmm. So because it's going to progress gradually until they stop growing, for some between the ages of 16 and 21, mm -hmm. You, will, you are to expect that slight increase. So it's not the eye getting weaker, yes. it is a child growing, you know? Mm. So the same way you buy them a bigger shoe, the eye will require slightly higher power. Yes. So keep taking them annually for checkups. For children with glasses, you have to take them in the earlier stages every six months because they're growing fast. Yes. Then thereafter, at least annually, to have that power adjusted. By the time they're 18 to 21, they're done growing mm. and their vision stabilizes. Okay. Yes. Wow, thank you for your so many questions coming. Let's see how many you can tackle. Thank you, Joyce, watching us from Muranga. We appreciate you so much. Uh, Lillian from City Eye in Nyeri says, say kudos to Daktari uh, from City Eye Hospital. You are representing them well. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this one says, I'm Richard from Nyeri. Say hi to my favorite surgeon. Uh, this is one of your patients. Uh, this one says, what causes eye allergies? Secondly, making... Uh, is slowing interfering in my eye. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Secondly, marking marking is slowly interfering with my eyes. Kindly advise. This this sounds like a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So what causes <laughs> eye allergies? Yeah. And marking is causing yeah. is slowly interfering with the eyes. What's happening there? Well, eye allergies will be caused by a variety of things. Mm. A lot of them are in the environment. Yes. And you know you inhale these things in form of what are called allergens. Mm. Could be dust dust mites, mm. uh, pollen from flowers or grass, mm. and they will give you nose symptoms for some people, a lot of sneezing or runny nose or dry cough, but for some, it will manifest in the eyes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, people get now what is called allergic conjunctivitis, where you have red, itchy, tearing eyes. So a lot of times it's environmental things. Mm -hmm. For some, it could be in the diet, mm -hmm. food. Uh, which could cause these allergies. Mm. So those would be the common causes of allergies. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Marking? Now, Can marking, I guess, is a near task. <laughs> yes. So she's possibly in the same group category as the computer people. She's doing a visually demanding task that she needs to concentrate on to make sure her students get the right grade. And therefore, you tend to spend a lot of time on white paper, potentially in bright white light in the staff room, and it's a task that you're so focused on, you're not blinking as much as you should. Mm. So we just recommend she takes a couple of breaks yes. in the midst of her marking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Solomon Mwaniki says, great program. Thank you, Solomon, for following us. And he's saying, I had two surgeries, one in 2012 and another in 2022. Recent surgery was due to teary eyes and uh, cataract, but not really sure. It softened a little, but the recent months I have been experiencing the same problem, conjunctivitis. Please advise. Mm. Well, if, uh, if, if you're suffering from conjunctivitis, that one will just, we recommend you get an eye check. Mm. I mean, just go to your nearest eye doctor mm. uh, because 
if conjunctivitis could be of various kinds. It could be due to allergy. Mm -hmm. It could be due to an infection. And infections are varied. It could be viral, bacterial, fungal. It could be something that looks like conjunctivitis. The inflammation could be within the eye, especially with that history of surgery. There's something called uveitis, which is inflammation within the eye, and could tend to look like conjunctivitis. Mm -hmm. So for such a client, I just advise that they get an eye checkup mm -hmm. so that, you know, the problem is kind of properly assessed and correct treatment advised. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. One more. Peter from Garissa, how are you doing, my dear viewer? Thank you for watching us all the way in Garissa. And Peter is saying, very informative program. Thank you, Grace and Daktari. And he's asking, my nephew has been having allergies in the eyes for some time. We went to one of the hospital, government hospitals, and we were told it's a, condi it's a condition and can't be cured. Uh, anything that can be done? Yeah, so allergy, as we said, is uh, it's kind of your immune system overreacting to things it shouldn't be. Mm. We're talking pollen, we're talking dust, we're talking mites. Ideally, these things should not irritate you. Mm. But your immune system identifies them as enemies and reacts to them. Yes. So allergies, you might not, you know, treat them, but you manage them. Yeah. So you'll manage the exposure to the allergens. Mm. So we're talking about making sure your house is clean and dust-free, um, avoid carpets in bedrooms, avoid dust, you know, avoid storing things under the bed. You know, houses in Nairobi now are so small, <laughs> you end up using every inch for storage, including under your bed. Oh, Cutting boxes, yeah. these are common sites where dust tends to harbor. Yeah. So you tend to make sure you've done a good job of dusting, avoiding carpets and things under the bed. So that's number one. Yes. Then when allergies flare up, get them treated. Okay. And the treatment for allergies is, is, is kind of tedious because you need to settle those eyes down reduce the inflammation, and then maintain that for some time. So allergy treatment will generally not be for a week or two. We're talking months. Yes. So if, if you're with the use of treatment, you get relief within a few days, mm. but that's not the point to stop treatment. It's time to continue. Yes. So for proper treatment of allergies, the treatment is, has to be prolonged so that you give the eyes enough time to settle and come to a normal state. Mm. So we're talking two to three months, and for some, they require even more than that in terms of long-term management for those allergies. Okay. So it's just something that needs to be well assessed mm. and any flare-up treated. Okay. Yes. One more here. My eye was hit in a violent marriage. Our listeners, our viewer says, one eye is poor, one eye is good. What help can I get? Yeah. I mean, when we're talking trauma, we need to assess what exactly happened. Mm. A lot of trauma cases are manageable because you could get trauma that leads to a cataract. The cataract can be treated. Um, when you're talking injury to the retina or a bleed. So many of the things from trauma can be treated. Yes. So I'd advise a, a proper assessment for that, you know, trauma mm. so that then, you know, she gets whatever treatment could be available mm. um, for this particular person. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you know, we feel bad for her having sustained that yeah. kind of trauma in that setting. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. We are sorry, uh, viewer, may the Lord heal you. Yeah. Uh, and please seek help. Don't stay in an abusive marriage. Seek help. Seek help. Uh, this one says Joel Mokaya from Ruai. How are you doing? Is asking what causes eye hemorrhage and how long does it take for one who has laser surgery to recover fully? Okay. So those are two questions. Yes. So I, I mean, eye hemorrhage is basically bleeding in the eye, and the eye can bleed at various levels can have small bleeds on the surface of the eye. Those tend to clear by themselves. Mm. You can have bleeding in the front of the eye from trauma and things like that. But I think the more common one is bleeding at the back of the eye, mm. which could be, it sometimes happens spontaneously. Mm. Uh, sometimes happens because of underlying disease, the most common of which is diabetes. Yes. Um, or vein occlusions, which have underlying them often things like blood pressure. Mm. So those are the common causes. So the thing is, if you have a bleed in the eye, mm. you need to assess establish exactly where is this bleed, mm. what is causing it, and then treat it. Okay. Many times you could treat it medically with special types of injections. Mm. Sometimes it could clear spontaneously, and if it persists, then sometimes it requires surgery mm. to clear that blood, find out what is the underlying cause, and treat that. Okay. Yes. Now, really laser is, surgery. She asked yes. about laser, laser surgery. Laser, laser surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Laser yes. surgery to correct mm. vision mm. Is, a, is a common surgery, mm. and depending on the type of surgery, vision is for most cases, improved by the next day, even the same day, mm -hmm. especially for very short-sighted people. Mm -hmm. They get the laser and the vision is better on that day. Mm -hmm. It's really almost miraculous. Mm -hmm. But I mean, for full healing, it will take about a month. 
because of inflammation, lubrication of the eyes, and all that. So usually about a month for most eye surgeries. Sometimes could prolong up to three months, mm. but most of the time within a month, we know how well you're doing after surgery. Okay. Yes. I really wanted, hoped we could talk about diabetes and eye manenos, but hopefully, uh, Madam Producer, please, next time we, we talk about diabetes and that, we have a few minutes to go. Uh, Felix Mudaura from Isiolo saying, congratulations to my doctor. Today you have so many of your patients <laughs> tuning in and just appreciating you for the yeah. great service you're offering to them. Mm -hmm. So as we conclude, Dr. Tari, uh, what tips would you give us about uh, eye care? And as you do that, I've always wanted to ask this question. You know, when I was growing up, my parents used to cut us these two things. What do they call it? Eyelashes, yeah. yes. So my is me come refusana. Let's reduce them. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that might have been some, you know, some, um, what do I call it? Traditional thinking or therapy. Mm. But I mean, eyelashes are, I mean, they're part of you. And if they're long, that's great. They look mm. super. Yes. This is your people putting mascara to even make them look longer <laughs> or augmenting them with artificial yes. lashes. Yes. But anyway, so, um, I mean, as a fine, I mean, as a tip on eye yes. health. Yes. I mean, for, I mean, dealing with the patients I deal with in terms of diabetics with diabetic eye disease that we said really leads to a lot of avoidable blindness, I recommend an annual eye checkup. Of course, you're following up with your physician because of the underlying diabetes. Yes. But as far as the eyes are concerned, make sure you get an eye checkup at least once a year. Mm. That will spare you a lot of grief in the future. Yes. That would be number one. Mm -hmm. um, There's a topic we'll discuss another day in terms yes. of retinopathy of prematurity. Yes. A condition yes. affecting premature babies. Yes. And for that, we just advise, if you have a premature baby, and you know a lot of these will be in the nursery for weeks or even months, make sure you get an eye checkup at one month. It's not necessary before, but at one month, the minute that baby hits four weeks, request an eye checkup if one is not recommended. Because That's for any preterm baby? For any preterm baby. Oh my. Especially the really tiny ones. Yes. You're talking less than one and a half or 1.8 kgs. Okay. Really small babies. Okay. Let them get checked. Mm. Because ROP can cause blindness, which is again completely unavoidable. Mm. And we're talking blindness from prematurity. Mm. So this is a lifetime of blindness. Yes. It's a total disaster when that happens. Mm -hmm. So those tiny babies in nurseries need to have at least that one eye checkup at one month when they're four weeks old. Yes. So this is a message to any mom or anyone who knows mm -hmm. someone with a premature baby. Okay. All right? Yes. Now, and then generally, okay. healthy diet mm -hmm. and, you know, good eye health care as we have discussed in mm -hmm. our, uh, you know, foregoing discussions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Harry. May God bless you as you continue to impact us. For sure, we'll have you come. Yeah. I really want us to talk about diabetes and eye health. It's called Dr. Mshai Gashago, our guest today, as you've been discussing about eye disease and blindness. I hope you've learned a thing or two. So, watch him out. Where can people get you quickly, Dr. Harry? Yes. I, have, I don't have any second. Where yes, can they get I'm based you? at the City Eye Hospital. Oh. We are at Upper Hill, yes. right opposite Traffic Police Headquarters oh. and at the Upper Hill Medical Center. Okay. And recently opened a new branch in Nyeri at the Asian quarters. So that's where you can find us. Thank you. Yes. May the Lord bless you and keep you and keep it right here at Hop TV. Look and leave. Let's meet again next week, Tuesday, same time, same station, as we discuss, of course, a different topic. My name is Grace Mutiso. Always an honor to serve you. Good night and God bless. <laughs>